We can go out this door, Rex, but it's a long way to get outdoors. Let's do it. And now out this door, we're outdoors. <laughs> and it's gorgeous. Blue sky, light wind, and for the first time in a week, since last Thursday, really, it's freezing out this morning. Just barely freezing, 25 degrees. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's 7.30, and there's some snow left. There's natural snow, too, at the top of the mountain. There's 43 inches at the stake. It survived the thaw, seven day thaw. I don't know a lot right now. <laughs> we were out last night with AIG, concluding their week with a group called Move United for adaptive sports. I met lots of great, inspiring athletes and individuals. And anyhow, <laughs> it was late at night and I wanna get on the lift this morning, so I'm not doing a lot of weather. I just know that right now there's a 1037 high north of us still influencing our weather with a thousand five millibar low east of cape cod it's still windy on cape cod gusting past 25 miles per hour what is wind air moving from that high pressure system to our north into those low pressure systems offshore i have a feeling it's going to be pretty fast up there this morning at eight o'clock so i'm going pretty fast i want to get up on the mountain and do some skiing. I haven't looked at the forecast, but I know it's gonna be storming Sunday and Monday. I don't know what kind yet. I'm gonna have to review that. So let me get out there. I don't think I'm gonna be doing hayride this morning. Look at those bumps. Those are probably pretty hard bumps up there. So a few runs and I'll come back and uh, go out the door again with more weather information. Yeah, Rex is a little mixed up. He thinks we're going out for a walk, but we're actually just going out right here. <laughs> to do the weather part of the out the door weather and more. Let me back over here. You can see the mountain is covered with snow. We've been up there where that's gonna be the in more part. All right, so what's going on? Beautiful blue sky. Here's the satellite imagery. A big cloud lurks. First of all, the departing cloud on the right, that's from yesterday's storm. And then the one for uh, tomorrow night is on the left and the lower left. It's not an easy situation at all. That really nice cold high pressure system we had is going to be replaced with low pressure to our north. It doesn't usually give us a good winter storm when low pressure goes to your north. So here's the map this afternoon. You have three lows right there in the middle. One at James Bay, Canada with a warm front. Another one near the Great Lakes with a warm front. And another one down by the Gulf of Mexico with a third warm front. So we have to deal with three warm fronts. After one cold night in a row, it's going to warm up tonight. We're going to have the first low way up there is going to take off. That's not a, a huge player. And there's another low that you don't even see yet that's going to end up taking over. How do we get from here to there? I'm going to use the NAM for all my guidance. It goes out 84 hours. It's high, not high resolution, but it's higher resolution than the global models. I'm not using the high res NAM. 850 millibars. I'm going to do the nation here. The nation. Blue is cold enough for snow, yellow is too warm, and that aqua sea green is kind of the mix area. So we have the first low that's gonna go into Ontario, pushing a warm, relatively speaking, wedge into New York and parts of Vermont. And a new low is taking over to the south, and that new low is gonna try and pull the cold air back in. So you can see by Sunday morning, it's actually colder in parts of southern New England and eastern New England than it is in parts of northern New York and northern Vermont. That's an issue. Then the cold air fills back in and we're all cold enough, even at the south coast, for snow Sunday night into Monday. But will the storm still be around? Yes, it will. Let's go to the 500 millibar flow. This is the upper level wind up around 18,000 feet. There goes one low out of here. Now you've got dual cutoff low pressure systems forming here in the Northeast, eventually turning into one cutoff low over the Gulf of Maine. And this is gonna trap the surface low and it's gonna end up doing a loop underneath that low, underneath that upper level low. We're gonna have what's called a vertically stacked storm here on Sunday. 
All right, now let's get to the meat and potatoes. Well, one more thing. How about the wind forecast? And then I'll get to the meat and potatoes. The wind, all right, so the wind, non-existent now. It starts picking up from the southeast tomorrow and east. That is not a snow direction. That is a rain direction. And then it's cranking. Now, it is getting colder aloft, but we're not really talking about the cold air here. We're talking about the wind. The red is gusting, not gusting. This is sustained wind. The red is sustained wind of 30 to 40 knots. And with that center of the low going right over Boston on Sunday, that's 40 knot onshore wind with an incredibly strong low pressure system sucking the water in off the ocean for moderate to major coastal flooding and certainly erosion with that wind turning around and coming back from the northwest late Sunday, Sunday night. And then it's just windy along the coast and in the hills on Sunday night. Monday too, and maybe part of Tuesday. All right, the NAM doesn't go out to Tuesday, it goes out to Monday. Now let's go to the meat and potatoes, the low pressure systems. I'm gonna show you the wide view because it can't fit on the uh, close regional view. So here we go, tomorrow there's green as rain. All of a sudden, oh wow, it's changing to snow. It's dynamic cooling, one low is going into Ontario. And then at one point we have a 999, stop it here, a low pressure system. This is now Sunday night, um, actually Saturday evening, I'm sorry, Saturday evening. And another low over South Carolina. And now that low over South Carolina is gonna end up taking over. But before that happens, that low in Canada is the one that's gonna draw the warmth in at most levels of the atmosphere. So what could be mostly snow in Northern New England, especially Vermont and New York, is gonna change to a period of rain. Every hour that we get rain is gonna take away from an inch of snow. It looks like mostly snow for most of New Hampshire and Maine. Vermont right here is the real tricky part. Anyhow, then it's gonna, no, sorry, I got off track there. All right, so now let's take it into uh, Sunday morning. Low pressure's coming right across southern New England. Now this low is gonna be taking over. The old low is gonna have sort of an instability trough with it, with a wind from the east in Maine and from the west in New York. That's gonna be serious convergent. The low pressure system gets down to 977 millibars on the coast of Maine. That's 28 0.87 on your barometer, incredibly strong low. Just read that as a, a big suction cup in the atmosphere with dynamic cooling. Uh, there's gonna be these bands of heavy snow and it's gonna be those, uh, the bands, you, you don't know where they're gonna set up, but it looks like it wants to be a widespread heavy snow here on Sunday afternoon, Sunday night into Monday with the NAM while some of the other guidance just shuts it off. Uh, so there's gonna be a real nice backlash snow here, even where it does rain in parts of Vermont. That low does a loop in Maine. Uh, I call it the blizzard loop because the blizzard of 78 did it. Uh, there's no blizzard of 78. I don't think it's gonna, it's not gonna be a blizzard either. It's gonna be a, a really heavy, wet, pasty kind of snow that is gonna cause power outages with the wind and the coastal flooding. Uh, so it is another in this series of just incredible winter storms we've been experiencing from coast to coast in North America, and it's been happening in Asia and Europe also. What an incredible winter. How much snow, Tim? How much snow? That's a tough one. I think we're going to get about a few inches of slop here on Saturday night. I'm talking about here near Mount Mansfield. That's going to change to a brief period of rain, then right back to snow. Uh, so that could keep snow amounts down a little bit, especially, uh, well, the valleys, it really shows up nicely. The Champlain Valley, the Connecticut River Valley, there's not a lot of snow. Uh, but the higher elevations, especially in southern Vermont, it looks like, and much of New Hampshire and Maine, uh, the purple is 12. So there's going to be a foot of snow. The bottom several inches are going to be heavy, dense, good base material. <laughs> Who wants base material in March? Uh, some of us do. And then the, the drying, less dense snow on top of that. I think a net gain of about 10 inches of snow for most of the Green Mountains, higher elevations get more, and then you get probably more like 15 inches once you get to Wildcat, and Cannon really needs it. Hopefully you get the Cannon effect going here, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a big supporter of Bodie Fest next weekend, and any ski area that can stay open. So uh, definitely taking a turn here. Uh, only focused on the next 72 hours. After that, there's gonna be a warm up the middle of next week, and there's still some talk of some Arctic air trying to come in around St. Patrick's Day and the uh, vernal equinox, but really don't see it, not in the uh, extended uh, Euro anyway. All right, so there, I'll just show you the second half of the Euro with the cold coming uh, at us again late next week with some mixed precipitation possible about Thursday or Friday, and that could just as easily be snow as rain next Thursday, Friday, but uh, it should be a less dramatic week next week. This will be coming up the fifth multi-inch rainfall, actually 
I guess two of them weren't multi-inches. More than a half inch of rain since uh, a week ago Wednesday. So just incredible weather drama goes on. And there'll be a lot more fine tuning to do here. Uh, it's hard for me to focus on so many moving parts, but uh, we're going to be calling the play-by-play -play from right here. I'm staying right at this mountain, right through the storm, and right into perhaps St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so instead of the out-the-door weather and more part being the travel yesterday, I'll spare you that. It was a really pretty sunset when I got here. Uh, just show you some highlights from on the slopes this morning. Really nice skiing, especially uh, where the sun was on those trails over there. And then I heard it was butter on Gondolier and Perry Merrill. I didn't get over there yet. That's this afternoon. Talk to you tomorrow. A couple minutes late, the heavy frost on the vehicles this morning. Nice night of radiational cooling. Did I mention I met Johnny Mosley last night? Oh, that looks good. Groomed. Not groomed. <laughs> but still snow on most of the trail. <laughs> so Johnny Mosley was there last night. He's an ambassador for Move United. Uh, his born in Puerto Rico and lives in California and Squaw slash Palisades is now his home mountain. So he won the gold medal in freestyle. That would be moguls in Nagano in 1998. What a nice guy. He said he would show me around Squaw if I could ever get out there. He said it's been a tremendous winter again. And our winter is back. I don't hear any crunching. That's nice. That's a little random, would you say? It's uh, 8.30 in the morning. There's a PAPS can just kind of sitting there. <laughs> so you can see there's some fog in some of the valleys. Nice inversion last night. That'll burn right off. Fast. Almost golf season, but not quite. That's the golf course. <laughs>